Hello, Merry Christmas and a prosperous New Year to all my viewers. I'm here for another edition of my book review. If you are just joining this channel, I welcome you especially to this edition. I am the Connect Joy I want to. Today I want to review another interesting book. And that book is titled Living for Reason. Living for Reason, written by Reverend Chris Christian the shepherd of mankind. Reverend Chris Kingston is the general overseer of Locust Army International Church. He's an apostolic prophet captured with the vision of raising an altar for the capital Messiah in the heart of Africa. He's a preacher of God's word and he's a prolific writer. His book centers on eschatology, apocalypses, ordinances, revelation, intelligence, and leadership. He has written over 200 best-selling books and he's still writing. He's the only African man who has written over 200 books and he's still very much active in writing. The Chris Christian is a sacred eunuch with an oath of poverty. He lives in Lagos, Nigeria. The book, Living for a Reason, was published in the year 2014 by Shekina Media House. The book has 10 chapters and I'm going to summarize each chapter. So sit back and listen and you will be blessed. Chapter 1 is titled Living for Reason. Chapter 1 says, Your reason for living which is called purpose was created before you. It is older than you because it is as old as God. Our very vast before God is evaluated from what we are living for. It is reason for living that introduces us to God and men. Living for wrong reason is as dangerous as not discovering it. Therefore, spending quality time to discover reason for living is as important as fulfilling it. Reason for living is ageless. Nobody can fulfill what only you is designed to fulfill. Those who are chained and confined by purpose must not seek freedom because it is only those who are bound by the yoke of purpose that can enjoy freedom. A man who is captured with the only assignment of his life will always enjoy the security, providence and attention of God. Reason for living can only be accomplished by those who spend time to discover them. Devoting your life to the only reason why God created you is an antidote against frustration and destruction. The gates of death opens for men the moment they separate themselves from reason for living. Chapter 2 is titled, The Purpose That Were Proposed. Chapter 2 says, Whatever is proposed by the incumbent strength of God cannot be disannoyed by the fickleness of man. Neglecting the proposed purpose of God for our lives is neglecting and abandon ourselves. Potentials, talents, giftings and abilities are lost or wrongly invested when reason for living is not discovered. God can't separate himself from whatever he proposed and he can't separate us from whatever he proposed for us. The proposed purpose of God in our lives is designed to reveal the grace and potentials of God in our lives. Because you are created uniquely, you must discover purpose and live relevantly. Every season has its destiny, and God doesn't separate what we can accomplish in a particular season from the destiny of that season. Those who stand with God in His proposed purpose will always enjoy the shadow of His undeniable presence. The land that men must depend on to rise to preeminence must be made in purpose. Those who wear crowned, made by purpose, will always stand out in the midst of their contemporaries. Chapter 3 Interpreting Purpose from Discovered Self Chapter 3 says, When we know who we are and our designated place in God, interpreting purpose will be very easy for us. When men don't discover who they are, they build their lives on vanity. Every assignment God gives to a man to accomplish must look like the man. It is what we know about ourselves that will help us to accept or reject an assignment. Undiscovered man can't be distinguished. He can't be used by God 
because he is unharvested. The reason for living is meant to be discovered, not chosen. We must learn to believe in ourselves and grow to accept God's purpose for our lives. Those who wish to discover purpose must seek God and themselves. God identifies with whatever he deposited in us, but God's deposit in us do not speak until it is discovered and put to work. Purpose will always attract God's attention on our lives. The strength to accomplish a particular task comes from the understanding that the assignment is uniquely designed for us. Chapter 4 is titled Interpreting Purpose from Potential. Whatever God will achieve for us is what He will achieve through us, and He must depend on the inherent potential in us to achieve it. When men ignore the ability of God that is expected to introduce them to praise, they tarry in misery. But those who discover and celebrate the endowment of God in them will always be celebrated. God believes that He is ignored when His investments in our lives are not recognized. Those who ignore the many sided, complicated ability of God in them can stand before God. They discover the ability of God in us is what is expected to introduce us to ourselves and God. God expects us to discover our uniqueness and purposely invest the potentials of God in our lives. Any destiny God must give to us is a destiny we must forge from His ability in us. The extent to which we can develop what is in us is measured in the nature of our potential. The endowment of God in our lives must not be neglected, and what God can achieve through us must not also be underestimated. Chapter 5 is titled Sanctified by Purpose. Sanctified by Purpose. Purpose is higher than life, that is why it must be hallowed. God doesn't separate purpose from destiny. After all, it is the purpose of men that introduces them to their destinies. Whatever God proposed can be disannulled. When men unmask themselves, they open themselves up to supernatural manifestations. Every life that must fulfill a particular assignment must be lived in a particular way. Nothing works on earth until man makes it work. God gives men grace to work out things that are designed for them. Whatever God proposed, we need the determined some will of men to be accomplished. God delights in intelligent labor. He rewards purposeful efforts of men. Purposeful living conquers fear in men. Because we are created in the image and likeness of God, we must learn to give ourselves only to things that are worthy to have them. There are names that can be despised on earth because of what it took to announce such names. We must learn to allow purpose to determine what we seek from God in prayers. Chapter 6, The Preservation of Purpose. The Preservation of Purpose. Chapter 6 says, God will always preserve whatever that is important to Him. It is our usefulness that determines the kind of attention God gives to us. It is what we present to God that He will depend on to preserve us. Whatever is vile and confused can enjoy lasting preservation from God. Preservation doesn't come through prayer, but from what we make out of ourselves. Any life that is laid down in purpose is internally saved. Humanity is perishable, but it can be preserved when it is overshadowed by divinity. A man who invested his life on God-given purpose can't be neglected. The relevance of every life is in the purpose of such life. It is through the process of recreation that God preserves the spirits in men. We must be part of whatever we want God to achieve in our lives. When men come into the realm of incarnation through recreation process, they enjoy the omnipotence of God's divinity. It takes God a lot of divine economy to preserve things on earth because of the economy of the earth. Chapter 7 Accomplishing Purpose 
accomplishing purpose. Purpose can be accomplished until it is pursued. Purpose is designed to be pursued and accomplished by those who have what it takes to accomplish it. God doesn't accomplish men's purpose for them. He expects them to depend on the development of the divine deposit in them to accomplish divine purpose. Men can't wear the crown of purpose until they accomplish it. It is through the accomplished purpose that men introduce God and themselves to the earth. Whatever God deposited in men needs their efforts to be accomplished. There are so many good works we can involve ourselves in, but they must not distract us from the main purpose of our lives. The price we pay to accomplish a particular purpose interprets the worth of that purpose. One man was designed to accomplish an act can be left to spirits. In fact, the glory of man is what God must depend only on him to accomplish. God doesn't do for men what men must do for themselves. Chapter 8 is titled, The Counsel of God Shall Stand. The counsel of God in his word needs to be discovered and followed. When men invest their lives in their own devices, they live without God's support. When men deprive God the opportunity of using them the way he wants, he withdraws glory from them. One of the most dangerous things a man can do to himself is to fight the purpose of God for his life. It is a battle that a man will never win. God depends on purpose to visit, abide, and preserve men. Purpose helps men to understand how they must invest their resources, talents, and time. When men save their lives on the altar of purpose, they multiply it. Whatever we do for God must be moderated by purpose. When men keep their lives on reason for living, they enjoy the strength of the Lord. When doors are opened through purposeful living, His influence lasts forever. Wicked men will always deny God the opportunity of using them, including their lives. You can be all that you are designed to be if you can allow reason for living to take care of you. Chapter 9 Serving the Purpose of God. Serving the Purpose of God. Chapter 9 says, we are all created to serve the purpose of God, not our own personal purpose. Any life that is not invested in the service of God can be identified with God. Serving right purpose protects the value of men's lives. It also promotes the usefulness of men. Our internal reward is in the service of God's purpose, not in the service of men. Purpose is the only compass through which men assess their future. Therefore, it is not possible for men to avoid falling into a dish if they are not purposeful. Since it is purpose that keeps men in God's presence, purposeless men can't live in God's presence. When people refuse to allow God to moderate their lives, He stops fellowshipping with them. When we submit ourselves, to the purpose of God, He crowns us. Any life that is selfishly devoted to its own purpose will be subjected to the clog of limitation. Whatever men do outside the purpose of God for their lives can be rewarded by God. Finally, chapter 10 is titled The Yoke of Purpose. Chapter 10 says, it is not possible to enjoy God's continuous support until we are yoked by purpose. To accomplish God's given purpose, we must continuously put our bodies under subjection. Purposeful men win their battles as they tarry in the path of purpose. When men subject their will to the purpose of God, their minds are renewed to conform to the standard of God. Yoke of purpose makes men born servants. It is very dangerous to deny God the honor of using our lives the way He wants to. A yoked man is always available for the restoration of God. Through the yoke of purpose, men are delivered from the path of death. It is not possible to be yoked 
and be confused. God enlightens the eyes of understanding of men when they are introduced to the path of purpose. Those who desire to partake in divine nature must accept the yoke of God's purpose. To be yoked with purpose is to share in God's awesome power. Ah, this book is a takeaway. I have read it from beginning to the end and it has helped me to know that I am living for a reason. This book will help you to avoid sin in your life because those that live outside God's ordained purpose for their lives have stolen in their lives and will eventually be exposed to misery and mockery. So make this book a must read. Make it a must read. You can get a copy of this book at Shekinah Media Bookshop at Locust Army International Headquarters Church located at Locust Army Bus Stop at the road Aja, Lagos, Nigeria. You can call this phone numbers 080-381-38751 or 080-3377-8843 to book your copy. You can visit this website www.shekinamediahouse.com to get your soft copy. You can listen to Reverend Chris Kingston live every Tuesday, Friday and Sundays by 12 noon, either through his Facebook page or YouTube channel, both at Reverend Chris Kingston. You can also listen to him on the following radio stations. Inspiration FM channel 92.3 every Sunday morning by 6.30 a.m. to 7 a.m. Radio Sapensa channel 95.3 every Friday by 8.15 a.m. and every Sunday by 2 p.m. Urban FM channel 94.5 every Saturday by 9 a.m. Ray Power FM channel 106.5 every Saturday by 9 p.m. Wave FM channel 91.7 every Saturday by 9.30 to 10 a.m. You can watch him on DSTV Wazobia Mass channel 259 every Saturday by 12 to 12.30 p.m. Thank you so much for being part of this edition of my book review. Remember to subscribe to my channel, like the video, and also share the video. Remember to drop your comment on the comment box. I'll see you again in my next edition. God bless you. Bye.